Hey everyone, it's Night Haro here, and today we're going to talk about Nightblade tanking. So I'm really excited for this video. This is one of my favorite classes to play, and uh, tanks are no exception. There's a lot of really fun things you can do on a Nightblade, and they offer a decent amount of group utility. The utility is not so much for optimized groups, but it can help. You can do a lot of healing as a Nightblade and really help keep your party alive. And then there's just like fun things like teleport strike. Uh, if you if you guys were uh, checked out in my live streams recently, you, you might know I was, I was memeing pretty hard on the teleport strike because it was just a lot of fun. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of other reasons, and we're going to kind of talk about that a bit today. So for those of you who are just interested in, uh, you know, certain aspects of this build or what skills and stuff you want to use, everything's timestamped below. So feel, feel free to check it out and uh, jump ahead if there's something you'd like. Just a quick note for the structure of this video. I will go over gear, CP, Mundus, etc. in this video, probably a little bit more than I should. But if you're interested in more in-depth kind of things on, on those subjects, I, I'll link a couple things and have them pop up here. But I have other videos on the channel that cover those things. I haven't done an in-depth CP guide yet. I'm going to do that after I do these tanking videos, but I'll talk about enough today that you should be in a really good spot. But as far as gear, Mundus, uh, you know, what traits to have on your armor, all that kind of stuff, I, I've gone over that in, in other videos. So uh, just check those out if that's what you're looking for, or if you want a little bit more in-depth guide. If you are really new, I still recommend this video, but if you just want to like look at a bar and just kind of get like a basic setup, just use the cheat sheet that I'm gonna show you in just a second, copy that, and you can kind of hit the ground running and learn a little bit about the tank as you go along. And then when you're ready for more in-depth kind of stuff, you can come back and watch the rest of the video, check out some other ones, and you should be in a good spot there. So with that, let's go ahead and look at those skills, okay? So first I'm gonna start off here and I'm gonna flash up the cheat sheet just so you can, you can have a chance to see this. So this is meant to be a reference guide. It's not meant to be a guide in and of itself. It's just a, for, for a quick reference. Again, you can find this on the community tab on YouTube, always here. You can also come by the That Wasn't the Boss Discord if you'd like, which is the Discord I run, and uh, and see it there. I also have uh, similar cheat sheets for all the tank classes that I'm going to be releasing, and then I also have some for stuff like group optimization and just other useful things. So check out the community tab, and you should be able to see them there. I kind of uh, update them as, as time goes on. Now, look Looking at our front bar and back bar setup, basically you have two kind of, uh, kinds of, of skill slots here. And uh, what you have is you have skills that kind of never leave your bar. And, uh, and I'll highlight those now. And then you have skills that are kind of flex spots, okay? And this is true for almost all tanking classes. You have skills, you know, you can always move just about any skill on your bar, but the, again, in 99% of situations, you're gonna have some that are always gonna be there, and then you're gonna have some that, that kind of swap out very often, okay? And those are your flex spots. Now, when you're going to decide where you wanna put skills on your bar, a couple of things to note which bar, front bar, back bar, does matter, okay? So it might matter because it's a sword and board skill, so you have to have a sword and board equipped to use it. It might also matter because maybe it's a damage mitigation ability. And typically our front bar is where we spend most of our time, and that's where we want the most damage mitigation. That's kind of our damage mitigation bar. And so we'll put stuff on that bar to help with mitigation. And then things on our back bar, we'll put things with a long duration. So we, we switch to our back bar, we hit the buff, once we got all of our buffs up on that back bar, we go ahead and move back to our front bar, and that's where we spend most of our time. Now, within a given bar, it doesn't really matter where a skill is at. It doesn't matter at all. It's only helpful for you. So what I tend to recommend is that everybody come up with some sort of, of mental construct or some kind of idea or useful framework of where you put skills on your bar. And this will really help you later on if you wanna try other classes, because then you only have to remember that certain skills have changed. So I'll give you an example and kind of explain what I do. So for me, my three spot on all my tanks is taunt, and that's front bar and back bar. Front bar, it's always my melee taunt. Back bar, it's always my range taunt. Uh, don't really change that. You never wanna put two taunts on one bar, like I've seen people with, with two taunts on one bar, uh, a range and a melee, you never want to do that, you just don't need to, and you want to be able to taunt something quickly on either bar. So I always put it in three because it's easy to reach, it, that's where I put my spammable on my DPSs, so it's ability that you, you know, you use a lot, so that's why it's there. Now number two, I always put as my self heal on all my tanks. My main self heal is always number two on all my tanks. So I know if I'm in a panicky situation, I don't know what to do. Number two, that's what heals me. I hit that button. And then number four. So number four on all of my bars, um, if half the classes have a, a shield, a class shield that you want to use very often, 
and then half the classes don't. So on the classes that do, uh, four is where I put my self shield. And then on classes that don't, I usually put something else that I still use quite often. And it's typically a dam another damage mitigation ability or another heal or something like that. So uh, that's what I do with number four. And then one and five on my front bar or flex spots on the back bar. I tend to, again, I already said I have three. One tends to almost always be my wall of elements with like one exception on a night blade, but it tends to be my wall of elements and I don't, I don't, it doesn't leave my bar. Your wall of elements is how you apply your weapon enchant for your two-handed weapon to reduce enemies' resistances, which is what you should have. A crusher enchant is what it's called. Um, so uh, that's what you always put here on, or that's what I always put here on my I, number one spot for me. And then, you know, and then it just kind of depends. Number four is almost always my source of major resolve. So whenever I flip to my back bar, you always want to have major resolve up. So it's almost always in the four position. And then two tends to be maybe some kind of class ability, typically a heal or something but um, it's just kind of a flex spot, but tends to be a class ability. And then five is what I use for kind of everything else. So all the non-class abilities you might want to have, overflowing altar, etc. So that's how I set up my bar typically. And coming up with something like that will really help you uh, just get used to tanking and learn where your abilities are so you don't have to look at your bar and you can spend more time looking at what the bosses and the enemies are doing and less time staring at your bar. All right. So now that we've kind of gone through that, we've explained how to set up your bar and everything, let's go ahead and actually talk about those skills on your bar that are generally not going to move, okay? So first up here is going to be Swallow Soul. And, and again, you can see that I already have a drop-down format, so there could be a reason you might want to use a different skill. You could actually use both the skills that I have here. Normally, you use only one or the other, either Swallow Soul or one of the offerings. There's Healthy Offering or Shrewd Offering. You could use either one of the morphs here. But <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So let's just go ahead and talk about uh, Funnel Health or Swallow Soul. So both morphs of this skill work similarly. One of them does less damage and gives you more healing and can also heal up to two other people at a given time per cast in the group. The other morph only heals yourself. It does more damage, but heals for less. So I haven't tested this out with a last patch, but I know it's fairly close at least. Historically, though, this has been the exact same amount. So basically, the heal either way is going to heal you for a uh, for the exact same amount. But the question is, like, how much damage are you doing? So in the case of Funnel Health, you do less damage, but you can also use this to heal uh, up to two allies near you for the same amount which can be really helpful. That's what I mentioned about, you know, being in portals and stuff like that. Or just in any time you're in a group, you can give a little extra healing to the group by using Funnel Health. With Swallow Soul, it's just healing yourself, but it does a little bit more damage. You know, honestly, there's no real reason to use Swallow Soul since you're mainly concerned with with the healing and you're not really worried about trying to do damage as a tank in ESO doing damage as a tank isn't really a thing you just you can do a little bit but it's it's going to be pretty insignificant and probably that effort should be spent on buffing the group and uh until you're at that point it's there's just no reason you're just not going to do enough damage for it to matter so swallow soul um this is just a great heal over time it lasts for 10 seconds so if you want a more uh heal over time based build then funnel health or swallow soul again your choice is going to be good options if you're solo you know, swap to swap to swallow soul, I guess. And then the other one here, the other thing you could use is malevolent offering. And both morphs of this skill are actually really good. I think probably shrewd offering is a little bit better and what I would recommend. But this is what you'll use as kind of your main uh, just direct heal if you're not going with a heal over time build. The other thing about this is both of these morphs heal a target that is you pick someone in a cone in front of you or yourself. So it'll heal you if you're low on health, but you can also point at somebody and you have to kind of imagine a cone in front of you and you can heal other people. So this is another option to help keep yourself alive. Now, next up is Pierce Armor. Pierce Armor, what this does is it debuffs the enemy. It provides both major and minor breach. So what that does is major breach increases the damage an enemy is going to take by 9%, and then Minor Breach increases the damage an enemy is going to take by 4.5%. So with this one skill, you can increase the damage an enemy is going to take by 13.5%. And then next up, we get another class skill here, and this is Dark Cloak. So th they recently changed this skill, and uh, I think it's in a really great spot. So uh, it gives you Minor Protection for 10 seconds, which reduces your damage taken by 5%. 
and that's uh, significant. That will that will definitely decrease the damage that you're going to take. Now, the other thing this does is it heals you for 150% more if you're not moving. So I don't love this change, but it is a great heal. And if you stand still, you can heal yourself for a ridiculous amount every tick. Okay, so this is an, an ability that you want to keep up the minor protection 100% of the time. And then you use the heal over time as you need it. Okay, so you don't need to be spamming this every five seconds to keep up. Um, and just FYI, it says three seconds. There's a passive in the skill line that that you'll you'll have, and it'll increase the duration of all of all of your shadow abilities by two seconds. So it's five seconds is the heal time. So you don't need to be spamming this and hitting it every five seconds. You do want to be hitting it at least every 10 seconds. But anytime you're going to take a heavy attack or take some damage, you'll go ahead and pop this. It's a great heal. Now, the other thing is that there is a passive in this skill line. And whenever you use a shadow ability, what it's going to do is provide you with major resolve for six seconds. Now, the two main shadow abilities that we're going to be using are Dark Cloak and our refreshing path, which we'll get to next. So it's six seconds, and then you add an additional 20% duration per piece of heavy armor you have, okay? So it's a little bit convoluted. If you have seven pieces of armor, basically when you use this skill, you'll get 16.5 seconds of major resolve, which you one up 100% of the time anyways, and you're casting the skill every 10 seconds, so not really a big deal, right? You're gonna have it up 100% of the time. Even if you're only in five pieces of heavy, it's still going to last more than the the 10 or 12 seconds that this ability lasts or your path in the case of the 12 second case but anyways my point is that this is actually how you get major resolve either dark cloak or refreshing path the two main ways and you don't really need to think about it make sure you keep up the minor protection on this which lasts for 10 seconds and if you do that you're going to be just fine you're always going to have major resolve so it's not going to be a problem i would also note that if you need to move it's not that big a deal this still heals you pretty well if you're using swallow soul and some of the other heal over time maybe a refreshing path, you're going to be getting plenty of healing in it, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. But this is a great skill. It's in a good spot and uh, definitely something you always want to keep on your bar. Now, moving to your back bar, refreshing path. So this is a really cool skill, and you could potentially switch, switch this out. You don't have to have this on your bar. I like it so much, and, the, and I think the speed boost is so much fun, and I like to have, you know, being faster on a tank is always better, and it heals you, so it's kind of like, you know what, and it could heal the group, too, if the groups on the other side of the boss so i just think it's a great skill and i would i would i i leave it on my bar pretty much all the time so what this does is you lay down an area it's about the same size as a, a wall of elements not the larger tanking and healing morph of wall but the kind of the smaller dps morph of wall of elements um, so it goes for a very long ways it's not super wide but whenever you cast it, you will be the area you're standing in will be considered to be in the path. So that's good. You don't have to cast it and then like move into it or anything. But what it does is it heals you for a little bit, it heals you every second. So that's nice. It's taking every second, not every two seconds over the course of 12 seconds. And it also provides you major expedition, minor endurance and minor intellect, which is pretty awesome. And any of your allies in the area also get those buffs. So minor endurance, minor intellect. And that's pretty cool. Minor endurance and minor intellect increase your your stamina and your magic recovery respectively by 15%. Now there are a lot of ways to get minor endurance and minor intellect, but this is just one of them and can be really nice for the group. So you just keep this down whenever you're standing in one location, and you plan to be there for a minute, go ahead and drop your, your refreshing path. Or if you got to get out of someplace quickly, you know, pop this for the major expedition and it's really nice. Next up is our wall of elements. So the reason we keep wall of elements down, generally speaking, is that it's just a great way to keep our weapon enchant procced. 100% of the time. And so you want to keep, you know, you'll usually have a crusher enchant on your back bar, uh, your two handed staff bar. And so you keep wall of elements down to apply that crusher enchant. If you are in uh, trash pools, if you're not on a main boss, you could actually swap out your wall of elements for Razor Caltrops. And the reason you wanna do that is because it applies major breach in an AOE. Now, if you're in a, a trial or even if you're in Foreman and you have something like a 
uh, Necromancer, their 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 Boneyard will actually provide that same debuff. So you don't necessarily need it, but you know you won't always have that. So it's good to have it leveled and to swap it on your bar whenever you think you might need it. And then you can you don't need Wall of Elements because the Crusher Enchant on that staff is only going to apply to one target at a time. So you always keep up your Wall of Elements on a boss at all times. But whenever you're in trash, it's only going to apply to one of those mobs. And so it can be a little bit better to just make sure you have AOE uh, Major Breach applied to everybody and then next up here we have our range taunt so they've made some changes recently and so now it's actually pretty viable and, and probably a good idea to run the Destro staff taunt which is going to be frost clench okay or just or just destructive clench so whenever you have a staff it becomes frost or fire or whatever so with frost clench it's going to taunt the enemy it will if they can be CC'd, it will pin them in place right where they're at. So that can be inconvenient on certain fights with trash, but generally isn't that big of a deal. The main thing is, is it taunts and then it also applies if you have, you know, if you're using frost clints, which you will be, it will apply minor brittle for four seconds. So this is a way you can help keep up minor brittle as well by hitting this, this skill often. It only lasts for four seconds. So you kind of have to hit it really often to keep up breach. You're probably not going to be keeping that up hundred percent of the time. If until you get to kind of of really hardcore sweaty groups and and then or maybe if you're an off tank or something but just know that that's one of the things that this skill does and then that's actually it for all of the skills that are not going to leave our bar after that we kind of have some flex spots so let's go ahead and talk about those and this is where things get really interesting so just looking at the sheet here we've got a couple of a couple of options on our number one spot on our front bar so starting off a low slash so low slash applies minor maim which will reduce the enemy's damage done by five percent however there's a lot of other places to get minor maim if you have anybody uh, doing brittle that will apply it if you have someone uh, on a night blade who's running the shade either morph is going to provide it and there's probably several other places too those are just a couple that are popping in my head right now so um you know you mostly use low slash for the ulti regen so you're trading stam for ulti regen if you're running low on stam obviously uh this would be an easy skill to drop first other things you can do here so again these flex spots are meant anything you can put here so any of the useful skills that i mentioned that are like auxiliary you could definitely put your chain here if you wanted to use silver leash that's what you need to use for your chain on a night blade and then uh, uh one skill that i had a ton of fun with the other day uh lotus fan uh or teleport strike the the morph is a lotus fan and uh <laughs> i was having a lot of fun memeing on this the other day um it, it, this skill though to be like totally serious it provides AOE minor vul vulnerability, which increases th the damage taken by the target by 5%. And it does it in an AOE in an area. So normally the place you're getting minor vulnerability from is from a warden. So their fetcher, uh, fetcher infection is going to provide that, but it's only single target. So they have to place it on each target. With Lotus Fan, you can do it in AOE. So this is really a skill that you want to use in trash in pretty much all situations on a Nightblade. Now you do want to be careful because when you use Lotus Fan or Teleport Strike in general, it does it, it does, it drops block. Oh, yeah. And uh and while you're teleport striking, you can get hit. And, can't, and I'll pop up probably on the screen here some examples of that with uh, the twins on the first first boss in uh, Dread Cell Reef. So you do want to be careful with this. You don't want to die, you know, trying to use it. The same with if you were on a DK using using Stone Fist or whatever. So you know, just keep that in mind. But the fact that you can do an AOE and increase uh, all the targets damage taken by five percent is a pretty big deal. So being able to use this once you get everybody uh, set up and in place, it can also be useful, you know, from moving from point A to point. B be but it's mostly a fun thing you can mess around with it in dungeons or if you're messing around in trials but it's a really fun ability it's mostly useful in trash though in trials so now moving on we actually have to skip to our fifth spot here so merciless resolve so this is an ability that each time you light attack you get a stack and at five stacks then you can get um, what we refer to as a bow proc or a spectral bow um, usually most people just say bow proc and the reason this is on here is because it's a way it's it's a really cheap skill lasts for a long long time you do want to be light attacking anyways on a tank just to generate more ultimate if nothing else and uh what you can do is save this and keep it procced and then when you need a burst heal you hit the button and it's almost completely free so it get negligible cost and it will heal you for a decent amount now it's only one time you'd have to light attack five more times before you get this uh so you know it's not an amazing skill but i thought it was interesting and interesting enough that i put it on here probably better to swap it out with something else if i'm being totally 
brutally honest, but it's an interesting thing that you can do. So I just wanted to mention it here. Uh, next up, I actually want to skip over and talk about some of the useful skills on the side here because they would typically, uh, a few of these would go on your front bar is where I'd recommend them. So first up is Concealed Weapon. Now, Concealed Weapon, the reason this, is, this has been changed quite a bit with the last patch, the reason you want to have on your bar it now provides minor expedition at all times. So it used to be that this increased your speed while sneaking. Now it just provides you with minor expedition at all times. So with this and our refreshing path, we have both minor and major expedition expedition and could just be really helpful for moving quickly from point A to point B and can save you from having to put on jewelry or put on race against time or something else. You can use, you can put this on your bar. You don't need to use it at all. Just leave it there. And while you're on that bar, it'll provide you a 15% increase in speed, which can again, be very nice in many situations and trials. All right. Uh, now an another skill here that is a flex spot that is on our use for skills that doesn't necessarily need to be on your front bar is mass hysteria. And this is the morph of aspect of terror. So the reason that this is interesting, and I almost miss this, to be totally honest with you guys, and that's the thing, I make these videos and I look through and I try to go over everything I can, play with them, play with the classes, try to do stuff that doesn't make any sense or probably won't work just to test it out. Uh, and I still almost miss this skill. So uh, mass hysteria. The reason you would want to use this is there are two reasons. First of all, you can, you can use the other morph, which basically allows you to fear targets, but you can drop an AOE and people can, they can walk in to it. So you could kind of plan if, oh, the ad's coming from this way, I can fear it. Mostly going to be useful in dungeons because most things in trials, you can't really CC crowd control at all. Um, so that morph would only be useful in, in dungeons. Uh, this mass hysteria could be useful in dungeons that's centered on you instead of being able to place it. And uh, the other thing it does is it provides major cowardice. So that reduces an opponent's weapon and spell damage by 430. That is significant, okay? Trying to translate that, I'll pop up here. I'm probably already playing it in the background. Uh, I just went into uh, Vass. Vass is a great place to go practice as a tank, by the way, because you can go in there, unlock everything, and be fighting a boss in no time, in a couple of seconds. And uh, you can go test how, how, much, how hard it hits and also learn how to tank by getting used to, you know, seeing mechanics. It won't teach you everything, but it will teach you how to take hits and how to move. So uh, Mass Hysteria, anyways, uh, the thing is that you, if you try the other morph, the manif Manifestation of Terror, I tried it, and it won't proc on the dragon. And I think probably the issue here is that the fear, uh, whenever you drop it, 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 it has to, like something has to walk over it. And I guess maybe it doesn't count things that can't be feared. I'm not sure what's going on, but it doesn't seem to work. It doesn't proc at all. Uh, however, mass hysteria does work, and that's centered on you, and what it does is it just reduces their damage by a significant amount. Either way, it's significant, so if you were in a really hard-hitting fight, potentially you could use this skill. Um, a couple of things about that. So if you're a main tank and you're already getting hit really hard in a, in a fight, this only lasts for 10 seconds and you have all the other buffs that you'd want to put on your bar and stuff like that. You would also probably need to put this on your back bar because your front bar would be damage mitigation. So you'd switch back, proc this, and then move back to your front bar. Well, if you're having a bar swap a ton and you're just trying to stay alive and you're trying to keep up relatively short duration, 10 seconds is not bad at all, but it's also not 20 seconds. Uh, so I don't know how useful this would be if you're the main tank. However, if you're an off tank or if you're just not the tank that's taking a bunch of damage at the moment, I think this could be really good. Um, the only other place that I can think of that you would get this in most trials is from Vicosa, which is a monster set that provides this buff. And even then, it doesn't provide it with like 100% uptime. So uh, Mass Hysteria, though, you can use this. It does work on bosses, on trial bosses, and can reduce their damage done. So even if you're an off tank, this could be a really good idea for really hard hitting fights. You could really help out your main tank and just your group in general, because a lot of times, a lot of the environmental damage technically comes from a boss. And so if you can debuff the boss, you can reduce the damage that everybody's taking. I'm thinking of, you know, Teleria, for example, the last boss in, in Dread Cell Reef hits really hard, last boss in KA, there's plenty of places. So this is pretty interesting. Even though you can't fear the target, you can still apply the major cowardice, and you can't get this from any other class. So this is a fairly unique buff that the Nightblade can bring, and that's why I think it's worth mentioning here.
Now moving on, and we'll go ahead and uh, move back to the back bar here. So uh, Phantasmal Escape, okay? And the base, base morph of this is Blur. And then there's Phantasmal Escape and Mirage. Both are valid. I'm just going to talk about uh, Phantasmal Escape first. So this is one of those skills that both morphs are actually good. The reason you would want to use Phantasmal Escape is because when you first activate it, it removes all snares and immobilization effects from you and makes you immune to them for four seconds. So this is something you would hit so that you could basically like race against time, which gives you, I think, three seconds of the same buff. So you could, you know, make sure you're not slowed, make sure no one's grabbing you, stuff like that. And then the other thing it does is that when you take direct damage, it reduces the cost of your next roll dodge by 10% up to 100%. So you could get a free roll dodge from this. So this is nice. You keep this up. It lasts for a very long time. And so, you know, 20 seconds, you're just taking damage or whatever. Uh, it, it will gradually, you know, besides all the other bonuses, it allows you to dodge roll for a lot cheaper. So it can be really nice. The major evasion that it provides, the reduce uh, reduction of damage, AOE damage, is situationally useful. A lot of times AOEs are meant to harm DPS and healers. And so, you know, if it was going to do a lot of damage to you, it would almost one shot the DPS or in healer. Now, uh, the way they get around that is some some damage scales off your max health. So, you know, there are situations, but is that going to be AOE damage that scales off your max health? That's an even smaller subset of things. So again, not it, it's good. It's not bad at all, but it's not quite as helpful as you might think. 20% damage reduction would be huge, but again, it's area of effect. So uh, a little bit more situational when that would be useful. Now, if you look at Mirage, which is the other morph of this, it grants minor resolve. And the thing is uh, th this was really good and, and a reason to always have this on your bar because minor resolve is gonna, you, you can get it from combat prayer and a few other places. Um, however, this is a great one that you can control and make sure you have up all the time with a 20 second duration. And that's gonna reduce your damage taken by 4.5%, which is significant and gets you closer to that to that resistance cap that you want to be at ideally or at least close to it you don't you don't actually need to build for it but you want to be as high as you can however now we can actually get that minor resolve from another skill that i'll talk about here in a second and so it's kind of like well we maybe don't need this as much and so we can go with phantasmal escape instead although in theory i would probably i would level both of these skills just to make sure you had them and next up is Siphoning Attacks. So this is something you, you cast, it lasts for a very long time, and then when you light or heavy attack, you get back both health and restore magicka for the duration. And then at the end, when it expires, you restore a little over 4k uh, magicka. You can take the stamina morph of this as well if you're having stamina problems. That could vary depending on what race you choose and, and other things that are going on. But in general, I'd probably stick with the magicka morph of this again situation depending you can recast this early and it will give you back a little bit less magicka but just realize that's what happens uh at the end um and and it kind of scales as you go along so if you need magicka back early or stamina early you can recast this now uh, are you going to be light attacking and heavy attacking a ton on a tank well it's a great habit to be in if you are able to but especially as a new tank probably not however the benefit is greater than the cost so this is a skill that you know you cast early in the fight and then maybe you run low on resources later the duration expires and you get that that extra you know three thousand resources or something like that so this can actually be really helpful and might be something you leave on your bar quite often and then last our kind of five spot here so i have overflowing altar that's a great skill that you can always have um, it's really helpful for the rest of your group it doesn't help you really it provides a little bit of life steal which you know helps a little bit but the main thing is that anybody within range and it has a huge range on this like 28 meters so it's it's a significant area like if you if you cast this in the center of cloud rest it'll it'll pretty much affect the entire arena so just give you an idea of how big it is and so you know this can be really nice because it allows dps and healers synergies aren't on a global cooldown if something happens somebody takes a lot of damage they can hit a button and heal themselves so it's a great thing to have in in dungeons as well um you could also put uh frost reach if you're an uh, off tank and you're trying to make sure that the target is brittled the boss is brittled at all times you don't have a brittled in or something that's something you put here. You could also put um, Resolving Vigor. And now Resolving Vigor, I mentioned this earlier when we're talking about uh, Phantasmal Escape, is that 
it now provides minor resolve for 20 seconds. So the heal only lasts for like five seconds, I believe, but the minor resolve lasts for a full 20 seconds. So that's pretty huge and uh, and can be really nice to have because it'll, you know, in addition to having another hot that's stamina based, it also provides that. So another reason why you might choose Phantasmal Escape and not go with Mirage, choose the other Morph of Blur. So uh, something to consider there. And now kind of looking at the rest of these skills over here on the right. And you know what? Actually, we need to jump back to our front bar. I missed a couple of skills. So I've been going kind of light on some of these things because I cover them more in depth in other videos. But I should I should say something. So uh, the, the, the skill that kind of looks like the cover of Bohemian Rhapsody here is uh, called Flare. Um, and either morph for the actually the unmorphed version, you don't even have to morph it, provides the, the full bonus for you. So what you want is major protection. So just having this on your bar, while you're on that bar, it provides you with major protection, reducing your damage taken by 10%. There are a few other places to get this, but this is the most uh, constant source of it and the most controllable. The other thing is that the passives from the skill line here, from the PvP skill line, will provide you with extra magic regen. I believe it's 10% per skill. It might be 5%. I'll pop it up on the screen. So with this and barrier, you get a significant bonus and boost to magicka recovery. So therefore you can cast more heals typically with what you're gonna use your magicka for. So absorb missile you use in a couple of situations. Really honestly, I say that a couple, I can only think of one. Uh, off the top of my head, and that is Zamaja and Cloud Rest. You would use Absorb Missile because their heavy attack hits really hard, and you can use Absorb Missile to basically negate most of the damage from that, or at least a significant portion of it. There are other skills you could use as well, but that's probably the best one. The other morph of this defensive stance is, is the one I'm referencing here. And the reason you might want to put this skill on your bar is just for the passive effect. So it allows you, when you have it on your bar, it allows you to block 10% more, and it makes block cost 10% less. So it's just another way of increasing your damage mitigation and passively by just putting this skill on your bar. Okay, now let's go ahead and finish talking about the rest of these useful skills here on the side. So first up, Sap Essence, okay? Sap Essence is a uh, really great skill. It's better on a healer or on a DPS because the heal and everything will scale off your, your weapon or spell damage. However, you can use this on a tank. It will provide a, a little bit of heal to you and a heal to the rest of the party. And if you're in a bunch of trash packs or if you're in a, in a really big ad phase, you could use Sap Essence to kind of provide a little bit of heal for the group and help everybody kind of stay alive. Kind of the only place you want to do that is in dungeons or if you're just your healers are struggling and you're in a group and you're just trying to keep everybody alive for a second, you could in theory use Sap Essence. It's not amazing. It's also not terrible. It's just something interesting here. Uh, another thing is you could use Dark Shade or Shadow Image. Shadow Image is kind of like Teleport Strike. Uh, it's really fun to use, but not actually that useful in content all the time, but it's really fun to use. So, you know, we can't go wrong. It will provide minor maim on whatever target it's hitting and will pretty much keep 100% uptime. So that can be another way if you need minor maim on a target. And periodically it'll do a, an attack if you choose Dark, dark Shade, which will do a small AoE. Um, again, nothing crazy, but uh, but every little bit helps. Caltrops, we kind of already talked about a little bit. Don't really need to say much else. Um, the last thing here, and I've, I've put this in all the builds, is Immovable. Immovable is great when you're in fights where, where you can be stationary for significant portions and for portions where you're about to take a lot of damage. So think of like Rakat in Veteran Maw of Lorkaj when he does this kind of machine gun thing where he shoots out a bunch of orbs at you. You take a lot of damage. As long as you don't run out of stam, using a movable could really help. You don't need to move. You just hold block during that, that phase. Any other place where you're just kind of holding block for a short period of time and you don't need to be able to move because when you use a movable, you literally won't be able to move. You can roll dodge if you absolutely have to move, but your character will, your speed will be effectively zero. Even if you're not in full heavy, it's so slow that it might as well be zero. Uh, and then last here is Pulsar. So this is a skill that really can be used on all tanks. And I'm sorry, Templar, uh, if you Templar tanks, if you watched the last video, I think I forgot to to really focus on this and a few other of these of these kind of universal skills because I've again I cover them other videos, but uh, I should still mention it here. So what this does, it provides minor mangle and an AOE. So this is AOE centered on you. It's not a huge area, but once you get all the ads stacked up, you hit this a few times. It's going to reduce the smaller ads' health, max health by ten. 
10%. So that'll allow them to die a little bit quicker. And with different sets and stuff like that, that could really increase DPS even on the larger ads if you have sets that proc off of dead bodies and that kind of thing. The other thing it does is it, it with Frost Pulsar, which you want to be wearing using a Frost Staff, it also provides minor protection, which reduces damage taken by 5% in that AoE around you. Um, so that's kind of nice. The other thing is that when it, it can proc brittle and if it procs brittle on a target, uh, it'll also reduce their damage done by another 5% by, uh, providing a different, uh, providing minor maim. Okay. So, uh, this skill does a lot <laughs> is I guess my major point. It's really only useful in trash. It's really expensive. You has to be an AOE centered on you. There's other probably better things you can do. The max health reduction is not going to work on elite ads or on bosses, so that's not going to be that big a deal. And you can get the other buffs elsewhere, but it doesn't in AoE, and it can be really helpful for the group to help keep people alive. Now, Nightblades have quite a few passives here that are pretty important, so let's go ahead and talk about them. So from the Shadow Skill line, we have Shadow Barrier. So this provides Major Resolve for six seconds. So this is where you get your source of Major Resolve, and you get it just by using any Shadow ability. Now, the two main ones that we're using on this build are going to be our Path of Darkness and then our Dark Cloak, okay? And either one of those skills, so Refreshing Path lasts for 12 seconds, and then our Dark Cloak lasts for, I believe, 10 for the Minor Protection is what we want to be using it. So um, if you have several pieces of heavy armor on, at least four pieces, you're going to be covered as long as you keep up those skills 100%. You'll always have major resolve. And uh, if you have more heavy pieces, which I probably recommend, it'll be even longer. So that's kind of cool. So that's an interesting skill. And in theory, if you wanted to, you could drop Dark Cloak and instead use other heals. But uh, that's not something I'm going to recommend, but it, just know it is an option. The other thing is, and this is with all Nightblade passives, is they all have some skill that would, for each skill or with a skill of this, of this type on your bar, it gives some bonus. So for the Shadow passives, it's Dark Vigor, which gives you 3% max health for each Shadow ability slotted. So if you look at our bar, typically we'll have one on each bar. You might have two, depending on what you go with, but if you put Path on your back bar and then Dark Cloak on your front, you get the, the max health. It's not changing when you swap bars because you will lose the health. When you swap to one with higher health, it's not like you automatically have that. It just increases your cap uh, there. So you could go with a couple of other, but it, you, typically you'll just have one on each bar. And so something to consider and make sure you don't stack both of those on one bar. You probably want to spread them and have one on each bar. Now moving on to siphoning passives. So there's Catalyst. This is a really interesting one. It gives you 20 ultimate every time you drink a potion. So we'll talk about this when we get to skills, but there is an argument to be made for using uh, reduced potion cooldown enchants on a night blade and probably the best race if you do that will change and will, will actually be an argonian but just realize uh drinking potions off cooldown on night blade can give you a significant amount of ultimate and it's something to keep in mind it's not going to make or break anything but it's important um a next ability magicka flood so this provides eight percent max magicka while a siphoning ability is slotted so this it's not per skill it's just total but it is something that is pretty significant. 8% is pretty huge. And as a tank, you know, you always want more max stats. So you really want to make sure that you, you have, at least on your front bar, but probably on both bars, a siphoning skill. So Swallow Soul is one. Uh, one of our malevolent offerings, either Morph, will also do the same thing. So if you want to put, again, Swallow Soul on the back bar, malevolent offering on your front, you can also use your siphoning strikes, either Morph as well. Uh, on your back bar, and that'll increase your mag. So you could just keep siphoning on the back bar, swallow or malevolent on the front bar, and you, then you don't have to have both heals, and you'll still get the full benefit from that. So that's another reason to have siphoning strikes on your back bar. And then Soul Siphoner. So this provides plus 3% increased healing per siphoning ability slotted. I'm just making note of this. You're really not going to load up more siphoning abilities on one bar than the other. You could. It's As a, as a tank, it's not going to be enough to really make or break anything and probably not worth really considering. And more important, you know, there's probably better reasons to use different skills on your bar than this 3% healing increase, but I just wanted to make a note of it. Uh, transfer. 
Transfer is the skill I mentioned earlier. It generates two ultimate whenever you use a siphoning ability, and that can happen once every four seconds. So again, you can use Swallow Soul quite a bit, and you'll see in a lot of the a lot of the footage I'm showing here, I'm not using Malevolent Offering. I'm using Swallow Soul, and I kind of use it as a spammable to give benefit to my group with a little bit of healing, and I'm also just having fun and seeing what I can do. Uh, next up, uh, moving to the assassination passives, we have Executioner. So this is when an enemy dies within two seconds of being damaged by you, you restore 1k each of stamina and magicka. So in fights with a lot of adds, or if you're off tanking, so places where I can think of with this is probably like first boss in veteran rock or of right, there's frogs everywhere. Also, on, in Mall of Lorkosh, the first boss, you know, there's all those cats that come out and stuff like that, and you're chaining them in, you're fearing them, you're trying to CC them, using a lot of resources, because a lot of times you have to chain them multiple times. And, uh, you know, when they die, if as long as you've got your wall of elements down so that you're providing some sort of AOE damage to them, you're going to get the benefit from this skill. So it's just kind of a uh, something to keep in mind. Uh, also, the next passive hemorrhage grants you minor savagery. Actually, it grants it to the group, rather, uh, which increases weapon critical for 20 seconds whenever you do critical damage. So as a tank, our critical damage, our critical chance is going to be pretty low. It's probably going to be under 20%, even buffed. It's going to be around 20% uh, in, a, in a full trial buff situation. However, if you keep several dots down, like your wall of elements, if you're using Swallow Soul, Low Slash, Pierce Armor, you know, most of your abilities that you do against the target are going to do some damage. And so the chances of you proccing this, it procs for 20 seconds. So you're going to be able to keep this up pretty much 100% of the time as long as you have your wall of elements down. Uh, all the time. And so that will provide that minor savagery for the group will incre increase their weapon critical. And uh, this is a uh, kind of unique buff. It's not entirely unique, but it's it's more or less a unique buff that you can provide to the group that no other class can provide just by being on a night blade. So if you're the only night blade in a group, you'll be providing this for the group. And that can be pretty nice. All right, so moving on, let's go ahead and talk through some really quick things. So for Mundus, generally speaking, we're gonna use the Atronach Mundus. There are other options. Again, I've done other videos on that, so you can go check them out. But at the Atro Mundus provides you with magic regen. On most of your tank classes, that's what you're gonna want. Next up is gear. Right now, the current meta is to have Yolnikrin and Turning Tide and Nazare on the main tank. There's a set coming out. I think you could swap out Turning Tide, and I'm going to have some options on that, but I'll cover that in another video. Right now, Yolnokrin, Turning Tide, Nazare is the main tank setup. For the off tank, you probably want Pearls, uh, the, the Pearlescent Ward from the new trial Dreadcell Reef, and then Powerful Assault, and then either Encratis or the new set where you can heavy attack. It's called Archdruid. Uh, Archdruid something, I uh, Deverus or Deverit, I, I don't know, something like that. Um, and that lets you heavy attack to provide the same buff you would get from a Colossus, okay, or debuff rather to an opponent. Um, and it does an AoE effect. So that's going to be something that I think could be interested in could replacing Kratos just because there's not as much fire damage as there used to be. Sorry, I always start to go into something more depth and I'm like, I need to keep this short. Uh, so I'm trying to do my best. Now, moving on to attribute points here. So typically, the simplest and easiest thing to do and a totally valid thing is just to put all your points in health, okay? However, I will say you generally only want like a little over 40K health on a tank and about, you know, 45-ish on certain hard modes where they're pretty hard hitting. So 40 to 45K-ish, if you have anything more than that, you, you don't need that. And so you might take some points out of health. That's an easy way to do it. Now realize what gear you're wearing, what enchantments you have. Typically, heavy armor comes with all health enchants. Change those. You don't necessarily need to do tri-stat enchants, um, but you could do stamina on some, magic on others, and kind of balance it out. And then you could, uh, if that doesn't work or you've already done that, you could move some points out of health and put it wherever you want so that you get to, you know, fully buffed, you get to that 40 to 45K range. Again, only needing like 45K if you're doing hard modes. Anything more is generally just wasted. It's not really useful. And in certain situations where there's healing debuffs, like Baneful and Cloud Rest, and stuff like that, having too much health is actually a detriment to you and your group. So keep that in mind. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but going through all the stats, I've been like, oh, we have X amount of health, X amount of Magicka, X amount of whatever. Um, 
that's generally just not useful. Uh, you never build for those things. They're always secondary choices. You're going to choose what armor you wear based on what best buffs the group. You're going to choose what skills you use based on what buffs the group, what keeps you alive, et cetera, et cetera. And, and the last thing you're going to worry about is what all these stats are in general. Okay. Uh, so if it, your resistance is, you can double check them when you're fully buffed to kind of see what they are. The soft resistance cap is 33k meaning that you can go over you just don't really get any benefit from going over unless your resistances are debuffed for some reason so we can see here fully buffed we're sitting at about 28,000 resistances again if you're wanting to know how to max it out and how to keep yourself alive uh, check out my unkillable god mode super chungus build uh, <laughs> that I did uh, recently and uh, and it'll explain how to how to get there basically you throw a master sword and board and then you can do a few other things but uh, yeah anyways you can find that there uh, next up is CP. So CP, what I recommend, generally speaking, is always have Ironclad on your bar, reduces your damage taken from direct damage attacks. Duelist Robot, this reduces your damage taken by single target attacks by 3%. Going to be happening all the time to you as a main tank, so that's really good. And then Enduring Resolve, this is reduces your damage taken by 3% per stage, so 6%. Uh, a lot of really hard-hitting damage uh damage that you take as a tank is a damage over time so think veteran rock grove but there's a lot of other places too where you like basai and stuff like that um where you'll take damage over time so i actually recommend duelist rebuff enduring resolve and ironclad almost always being on your bar now after that a couple of options unassailable reduces your damage taken from area of effect attacks by again you can get up to six percent now the thing with this ability is that it's it's Typically, area of effect attacks are not designed to kill the tank. They're designed to, to either be heal checks or to kill the DPS because they're, they're, they're not going to, if it did enough damage to kill the tank, it would one shot everybody else. So it's usually scaled to deal damage to the DPS and be scary for them, but not kill them. And so for you, that's very, typically very little damage. And so that's why oftentimes you don't need unassailable. There are exceptions to that rule where there's AOEs that will scale or will hurt you really bad. And so unassailable can be a very useful skill to have. However, you could also go with like arcane supremacy to increase your max magicka if you wanted to do something something like that. Or what I think might be one of the most interesting choices is foresight. And foresight is all the way at the tip of the spear. It's a healing ability, I think is, is kind of where it's primarily meant to be. But if you drink a potion, the cost of your magic and stamina healing abilities used within the next six seconds are reduced by 75%. So what this means is if you're in a situation where you take a lot of damage and, and and that's usually when you would be saving your potions for that, or if you know you're about to be taking a lot of damage, you can drink a potion, and then basically your heals are, they're not free, but they're so cheap, right? You could use four times for it. So you can just spam your heals for six seconds and ke help keep yourself alive. So if you're cursed on Basai, this is going to be a huge help for you. But any other situation where you might have an oh shit moment where you drink a potion, you're going to be able to spam your heals and it's going to cost next to nothing. So I think this foresight could be a really good contender and almost might be one that I would just keep slotted a lot of times because it is just so good. Um, so just something to think about there. Now on to the red CP. Now with the red CP, there's like 80 options, okay? And uh, I've got them listed there and I will do a video on CP. I haven't done one yet that really walks through and talks about this. So I'm just gonna give a brief idea. And I'm gonna say here, use what you want and what works well for you. And, and I'm gonna give recommendations, but feel free, be flexible here. Use what is good for you and, and what's good for you on a given fight. So expert evasion, this gives you a free dodge roll every 30 seconds. This is a huge help and I highly recommend you slot this CP. I almost never take this off my bar just because it's so good. And there's few situations where it's not good. I don't feel like swapping it out. So I leave it on there. Okay. Uh, so if you're doing some really sweaty hard modes, yeah, you might want to swap it out if you're not using it, but having a free dodge roll, if you accidentally run out of stamina and you absolutely need to dodge or dodge a heavy attack because you can't block it or because something else, having this can save your life. So uh, yeah, expert evasion, can't recommend it enough. Uh, celerity, increases your movement speed by 10% if you have it maxed out. 
um, per stage, it's just a huge help. It's often, surprisingly often, it, it is useful to be able to move fast as a tank. And so Celerity works great for that. You can also use one piece of Swift jewelry and that can be very helpful as well. But Celerity is nice because you can just slot it and you're good to go. Next is Rejuvenation. So this is increases your mag stamina and health recovery by 90 by 90 points. Recovery and having more resources is just always good on a tank. And so rejuvenation is kind of nice. It always works. If you have it slotted, you're not blocking, you're going to get all those regen. So it's just it's just really nice to have. So that's why it's kind of like a go-to. There's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing amazing about it, but there's nothing wrong with it. And it's always going to help you. So it's nice. And then last up is fortified. So fortified inc increases your resistances and that just reduces all damage you take. So again, it's just kind of a no-brainer. You don't have to do anything. It's very much like rejuvenation where it's, it's not necessarily anything to write home about, but it's always going to give you a benefit. And, uh, and it, and it is, it, you know, while it's not huge or it is significant enough to help you out. So it's something to keep in mind. So that's why I like fortified. Now, again, I have a whole list of, of all the different, uh, passives and CP passives that you could put on and their benefits and everything like that. Now, other ones that could be very useful, you might go with something like boundless vitality to increase your max health. Maybe you're doing hard modes, you're getting hit really hard. Maybe you've specced some other stuff differently and you need more max health. So balanced vitality works well. Bracing anchor will increase the amount of damage you can block. Now, the problem is it slows you down significantly even after you've let go of block. So it's better on fights that are less mobile or where there's like a mobile portion and then you're just standing there. And then there's a mobile portion and then you're just standing there. Places I can think of uh, possibly could be uh, like Maw of Lorcage, right? When you're moving, you move from one pad to the other, but after that you're just standing there and you want high damage mitigation if you're on like hard mode or something. So you just kind of have to decide when and where to use that. A tank mitigation is up very high from what it has been historically. So I find myself not needing bracing anchor a lot. And I find having the mobility to be a lot more convenient. So that's why I don't have it as like, hey, always put this on your bar because I don't always, I often don't have it on my bar because I just don't feel like I need it anymore. And I want that speed. Uh, other things that are useful, Slippery is really nice in the last boss of Dread Cell Reef. It lets you automatically break free if you're stunned. Uh, strategic Reserve and Refreshing Stride both give you huge benefits. One gives you health recovery uh, for having ultimate, just having ultimate sitting kind of in your character, not used. Uh, so it gives you a lot of health recovery. And then uh, the other one, while sprinting, you get health and mag recovery. Now, uh, the re both, both of those... CPs are really useful in cloud rest and they're good enough and significant enough that in cloud rest can be hard enough, uh, that I recommend putting them on. Uh, you don't really use them in, in really any other situation that I can think of, but they're good enough that I thought they should be mentioned here, even though it's mostly just cloud rest that they're useful in. There might be one other place for one of the other ones, but you get the idea. And then last shield master and ward master. So this increases the, or reduces the cost of your shields. And then I believe the other one increases the effectiveness of them both by 10% each, you know, potentially they could be good. You know, are you going to notice that difference in, in cost, the 10% cost reduction? Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, it, it's not bad. All right, for gear. So basically, uh, if you want to keep it simple and cheap, you can just go with sturdy on all of your body pieces, everything. If you've got a little bit more money, you've been playing for a while, it can be a little bit more advantageous to have infused pieces on the large pieces. Large ones are your chest, your legs, and then your head. They will give you the most benefit from infused and then you use a tri-stat enchant. If you're really uh, rich and you want to do tri-stats on everything, you can do that. I don't think it really gives you that much of a benefit unless you're really doing extremely hard content, so it's not really necessary. You can just kind of alternate between magicka and stamina enchants on everything. And typically you want to keep your stamina higher I'm questioning that now, um, if that is still the case with every class and every situation, because you get more of your highest resource back whenever you're using certain synergies. And so, you know, I don't know if that's that's actually necessary anymore, but uh, here or there, you can kind of play with it yourself and decide what you want to do. And then for jewelry, I would recommend three pieces of infused jewelry, and then you can choose your enchants. I recommend at least, or I recommend two reduced prismatic cost. Those are very good. You could also do either one or several of mag recovery that are again infused or if you want to play around with some of that you know the the cp that i mentioned with the potion drinking you could also do some reduced 
uh, cooldown for your potions. Those are more of a niche thing. I think it's better on a Nightblade, which generates ultimate by drinking potions, but just something to keep in mind. And then after that, on your on your shield, same deal, sturdy, and then uh, just uh, basic enchant. It's not a big deal. For your weapon, I recommend infused on both bars. On your back bar, you're going to have infused crusher enchant. And then your front bar, you can kind of do whatever you want. I happen to have like a flame glyph. I think this is back from uh, a little bit old meta for a DK. Uh, but you can do the, you know, any any enchant that sounds good. There's one that gives you a shield. There's some that will reduce opponent's resistances. There's several things you can do. Uh, it really doesn't matter. It's just kind of whatever you want to do on the front bar. And that's pretty much it for gear. All right. So now let's go ahead and talk about rotation. So for a night blade, depending on what you have on your back bar, you're generally going to keep down your wall, your path of darkness or refreshing path as it's called. Um, and then, you know, if you if you have siphoning strikes, you'll keep that up. If you instead decided to go uh, with Mirage or Phantasmal Escape, you'd want to keep that up. And that's going to be a pretty long duration, 20 seconds on both of those. And then it depends what your flex spot is. On your front bar, you're going to want to keep up 100% of the time the minor protection that's provided for you by your dark cloak. So make sure you you watch the second timer, and that's what you want to make sure you keep your dark cloak up. Anytime you're about to get heavy attacked or take a bunch of damage, make sure you pop dark cloak. And then, uh, you know, you get healed for an extra 150%. And as you can see, that's significant. Uh, I'll pop it on the screen right now. So just realize that, uh, you know, not moving when you don't have to. Don't DPS shuffle uh, when you're using the skill, and that'll help you heal for considerably more. And then if you are using Swallow Soul, I recommend keeping it up and ticking 100% of the time. Okay, so with a Nightblade and with, and this is actually true of all tanking classes that you have kind of a, uh, that you might have more of a heal over time rotation, you really want to make sure that you keep all, the, all these things up. So you really do have a full rotation as a tank. So on your back bar, you're throwing down your path, your wall of elements, you need to keep that down 100% of the time for uh for our enchant to be able to apply the crusher enchant um you don't need to use your range taunt uh you know so you don't have to worry about that uh however if you're going with siphoning strikes or with uh, some version of blur you'll need to keep that up 100 percent of the time if you're uh using vigor you want to use uh, that every 20 seconds so you get that minor resolve if you're using overflowing altar that has like a 30 second duration so you don't have to do that too often on your front bar, you know, if you're using low slash, you want to keep it up 100% of the time so you get more uh, more ulti gen from it. We already talked about Dark Cloak. You know, you can use Malevolent Offering and uh, just use that whenever you need it for your burst heal. Or, again, you can use Swallow Soul. Swallow Soul could also be, as we mentioned, moved to your back bar. And then it just kind of depends what your, your five is on your front bar. So, again, kind of confusing, but typical rotation is probably going to be uh, something like Wall of Elements, your Path. This is after you've taunted and everything, of course. You can pre-buff your uh, Mirage or Phantasmal Escape. It's either That's the either morph of Blur. Similarly, you can pre-buff your Siphoning Strikes. You can also pre-buff your Dark Cloak. And then, you know, kind of run in, taunt, drop your Path, drop your Wall, uh, hit Swallow Soul if you need it, low slash to get a little ultimate, and kind of go from there. If you find, and how to choose which of those skills to use first, if you find that you're struggling, you're dying, you're taking a lot of damage, low slash is going to become a very low priority, and you want to make sure you got your heals, like your path and your Swallow Soul up, and of course Dark Cloak. And, and then, you know, if you're finding, oh, well, I don't have a problem staying alive or healers are really on top of it, then you can work on ulti gen and kind of debuffing the ads and boss more heavily and less focused on keeping up all your buffs and hots. So just kind of, you know, ideally you could you would do both, but, you know, you got to cast some skill first. And that should depend on how comfortable you are with the content and how survivable you feel or you are in the given content. And then kind of, you know, make your own decision there and, and kind of... Uh, do what is best for you. Well, guys, I think that's it for the Nightblade. I hope I covered everything. I always make these videos and I'm always like, oh man, I forgot this, this, and this. But um, the bottom line is that Nightblade is a really fun tank to play. I highly recommend it. It's a little bit different. It's probably the most different out of any other tank class as far as how it feels and how it plays. But they're really fun. You can get a ton of healing over time. You know, are they the best in slot? You know, there's not really a best in slot now. They're, they're probably still a DK is, you know, the king. But uh, it's still a really fun and really great class to play. And uh, no reason not to play a Nightblade tank. They work great. 
So uh, anyways, guys, that's it for this video. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.